beautiful morning, people of God. Let us give God thanks and praise for this new day of life as we begin our acts of worship. Welcome to Morning Prayer. Continue. Our opening sentence is on page 32, and we continue with the pages following thereafter. Let all the earth acclaim God, sing to the glory of his name, make his praise glorious. Psalm 66, 1 and 2. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong our power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let your worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Holy Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Jubilati. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph over the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and shall be forever. 
Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us pray together. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve your newness of life, to the honour and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 121 I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he comes. He who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is, a, is built as a city that is at unity with itself, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. For my brethren and companions' sake, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of our God, I will seek to do you good. Psalm 123. To you I will lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their handmasters, and the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he, sh he show us his mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of content. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich, and of the derision of the proud. Glory to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 1 to 13. That day, a severe persecution came against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria. Devout men buried Stephen and made loud lamentation over him. But Saul was ravaging the church by entering house after house. Dragging off both men and women, he committed them to prison. Now those who were scattered went from place to place, proclaiming the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah to them. The crowds with one accord listened eagerly to what was said by Philip hearing and seeing the signs that he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud shrieks, came out of many who were possessed, and many others who were paralyzed or lame were cured. So there was great joy in that city. 
Now a certain man named Simon had previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria, saying that he was someone great. All of them, from the least to the greatest, listened to him eagerly, saying, This man is the power of God, that is, he is great. And they listened to him because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. But when they believed Philip, who was proclaiming the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed. After being baptized, he stayed consistently with Philip and was amazed when he saw the signs and great miracles that took place. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Benedictus. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to set your people free. You have raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised the Lord to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, who set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you, all the days of our life. And your child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verses 30 through to 47. I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that his testimony to me is true. You sent messengers to John, and he testified to the truth. Not that I accept such human testimony, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father have given me to complete, the very works that I am doing testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and you do not have his word abiding in you because you do not believe him whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is that they testify on my behalf. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know that you have not the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name and you do not accept me. If another comes in his own name, you will accept him. 
How can you believe when you accept glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the one who alone is God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom you have set your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how would you believe what I see? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When upon life's pillows you are tempest-tossed When you are discouraged thinking all is lost Count your many blessings, name them one by one And it will surprise you what the Lord has done Count your blessings, name them one See what God has done Count your blessings Name them one by one Count your many blessings See what God has done Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy? Every doubt will fly And you will keep singing as the days go by Count your blessings, name them one by one Count your blessings, see what God has done Count your blessings, name them one by one your many blessings, see what God has done. As we reflect today on Acts chapter 8, verses 1 to 13. Amen. I remember early in my life, I'm still fairly young, but when I was in my younger, younger time, 
I participated a lot in network marketing schemes. And one of the things that was quite similar in all of these business structures was that they will ask you, Mark, why do you want to do this business? Why do you want to become a part of this company? Why? And their philosophy and their marketing technique was tied a lot around your reasons why. So that they would use your reason why to push you to accomplish whatever targets, whatever sales, whatever it was to motivate you. And they will put a dollar figure behind it so that you will be working towards that. And that will be your goal. That will be your focus, your mission. Fast forward to 2022. And I asked in the church, what is your reason? Why? For what you are doing? Why do you accept or proclaim to become a Christian? Why? Why do you try? Why do you say to yourself that this is something I want to do? This is something I believe that I have a calling. Why? Do you believe that you received a call upon your life that God has specifically called you to do something special? And if so, are you taking this call seriously? Are you taking this call upon your life as a mission set before you by God that you and only you can do this? I speak on this because we have things a bit, in most parts of the world rather, a bit easier than others. In the days of what we speak with the apostles here, that was before his conversion, Saul would have just participated in the stoning of Stephen, the martyrdom of Stephen. So Stephen, who was one of the first deacons in the church, according to the Holy Scripture in Acts chapter 6, he would have died a painful death through stoning. And even during his death, he would have asked God to not to hold his sin against those who murdered him, but rather to forgive them of their sins. We see here how the activities of this shaped the early church. It shaped the early church in that concept because now we see a different perspective where it was not all, for want of a better expression, honky-dory for them, so the church, to be one straight path, but rather one that was forced and forged with fire and persecution and trials that made the Christian belief stronger and stronger and stronger. We see here where in the scripture passage, we, I read here for, in part of verse 1, it, and Saul was consenting unto his death, which means that he was very focused, he was very free, he was, he was, he was, he was so passionate about it that he was he was fired up to do what he had to do and this and that led to the great persecution against the church in jerusalem now it is important to note this because at that point in time the church would have been focused the the, the would have been centralized focused to the region of jerusalem at that point so that they believe that, hey, if we destroy the church here, it will stop. And that we will stop the spreading of this message of this Jesus Christ. 
and stop people um, in Jerusalem from spreading it so that no people will accept our usual ways and continue with the Jewish custom and not go on. But it says here that they were all scattered about throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. So that it, it, it says, rather than keeping it confined, which it was originally, the church now blew up. Because when the disciples ran for their lives and they went and they continued to run, so they went east and the west, and it says here, in the regions of Judea and Samaria, that they, when they went in that aspect, they, the church itself now went with them. So now rather than be confined to Jerusalem, the persecution of Christians forced the church to grow outside of Jerusalem. Now you see, that is because God used this to continue to propel the growth of the Christian faith. We see how beautiful it is, huh? Despite the persecution and the despite the stresses of how much they try to stop the growth of the church, you see what happened? They continued to grow. They continued. They stay focused on their reason. Why? Why were they doing it? They weren't doing it just because it was bringing them status in the community. They were not doing it because it was just something to do. But rather, they gave of their lives. Some of them some of them were thrown into prison. Some of them would have had their property taken away from them. Some of them would have been beaten. But you know what? They stay true. Because their reason why, their reason for doing it, the reason for going out into the church was greater than giving up. Giving up meant that they were going to give to, to accede to the beliefs of the chief priests and elders for all of the things that, that said that Jesus was not true and that the ways and the teachings of Jesus was not true. But they continued and they persevered and they, despite where they went, they continued to serve our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Now here's the other part about it. it say, and it says here, all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So they continued to hold the fort in Jerusalem. They continue to give their teachings, they give their lives, they continue to hold it down as the headquarters of the faith at Jerusalem while the others dispersed. They, they Some people may say they, came, they stayed so that they could be a distraction so that the others could escape and live. We don't know. So it reminds us that and when we begin in verse 2, when they say that devout men carried Stephen to his burial. In other words, they buried Stephen. It shows now the divinity that Stephen would have been, or the divine regard that they would have had for Stephen. Now remember, in Acts chapter 6, these men would have been chosen. I'll go back to it for a second. So in Acts chapter 6, when they would have chosen seven men of good, of high esteem. All right. Um, look out for people who are honest, re honest report, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, and who we may appoint over business. So Stephen was one of them. This is from Acts chapter 6 verse 3 so when we see our, that aspect in terms of the quality that Stephen would have had of good esteem of high report and these things where the characteristics were so crucially important that he was appointed by the people and the people themselves when this happened 
they of course it says here that they lamented over his body in other words to lament means to wail to cry to to express grief in some aspects they would have torn their clothes and, and have one sackcloth and ashes and these things because you see to have a man such as stephen one of the appointed leaders in the church one to whom the holy spirit would have been would have been upon where in the aspect of the holy spirit receiving the holy spirit through the laying on of hands by the apostles you see so this would have spoken to whom stephen was stephen wasn't just another man stephen wasn't just another person in his society but he was one of god's chosen people so stephen when he was crucified sorry when he was torn to death he mirrored in his life, it, it reminded you of the persecution of Jesus. Because you would have heard about the false accusations made against him. I invite you to go back and read just in chapter 7 with the false accusations made against him and the, the, and the similarities to when the chief priests and elders, how they wanted to crucify Jesus, they used the same tactics to have to and to uh, to uprise of course an uprising by the people and stone Stephen to death but the people were so focused that rather than this turn them off it worked on at and exciting inciting sorry both sides it incited the persons of Christ to continue to spread the gospel even more and sadly it also incited the persons of per the persecutors Saul and others to, uh, to increase their approach against all of those who were the early church and the early Christians so we see it here we see the persecution the hatred the, the fear that they would have had and he continued, he, 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 scripture says here that Saul, I'm using here for a change, I'm using the, new, the King James Version, the New King James Version here for a second. So, because I want to get a different meaning, a slightly different perspective. So Saul made havoc in the church, entering every house, so that... And he, hold, and he took out every man, woman, and committed them to prison. So it had no discrimination. He didn't care whether you're a woman, whether you're a man, whether you're a child. He didn't care. He, what? he coming out and he taking out the whole household. The whole household he going with. And he continued. And then the, this caused people to run, to flee. And naturally, when people flee and wherever they would have settled, they would have taught their way of life. And their new way of life was not just a religion, but their new way of life was their spirituality. And when they settled where the various outskirts and the regions, it continued to stay there. So then Philip went out to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. So, preaching Christ to them in Samaria. We have verse 5 here. So, we see once again the continued aspect of that growth of the church, the spirituality, and the people gave heed unto those things with spirit which Philip spoke, and they accepted the gospel, and they saw the miracles that were being done, so that here's what what is this what is this that this man speaking it was new it was novel to them so that they were so incised once again and they continued and the church grew and the church grew and the church grew even the sorcerer simon now this is not to be confused with simon peter but rather a sorcerer at this place where this man used to practice all the witchcraft and all these things. He saw the importance of the Holy Spirit. And he 
and, so, and verse 11 says that to him they had regard because of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when he believed in Philip preaching the good things concerning the kingdom of God, he was now empowered by the Holy Spirit rather than being empowered by the, the, the dark arts rather than using the, the dark arts to cheap power, tricks and witchcraft and money and all these things. He saw a greater purpose where he can, with the P, recognize power. Power recognize power. Power recognize power. He recognized the power of the, the, the evil that he was participating in, the misdeeds. He recognized the power of goodness, the power of God. And he recognized that it was true. And he recognized that it was honest. And he understood. And he decided, here's what, he changed his ways. And he decided to go and follow the ways of Jesus and continue. And he joined the number. Now, Simon being mentioned here is not by chance. Because he would have been a popular person in his society. And then when the writer here would have seen that Simon would have made an insignificant part and it was worth mentioning for his name to be called. So it's not by random, it's not happenstance, but he continued and he made an, an, an input into the development of the church. So I go back to my reason now. Why? Why are, did we choose to tune in to this YouTube video today? Why did we choose to wake up and say Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Why? What is your reason for doing it? Is it that your parents or grandparents forced you to sit down and watch this video? Or is it that you are accepted this Christian role because it is a means to an end? Did you accept uh, this Christianity because of what somebody would have told you? But my dear friends in Christ, what I am asked, what I'm encouraging you today is that you will never learn the true reason why unless you delve into the holy scriptures according to God, until you delve into the life as a Christian, and until you give your life fully to Jesus. Give of yourself, give of your life, and, and surrender your life to God so that when the opportunity comes, people will understand that you are a child of God, a Christian, a true Christian, and follower of Christ, and that nothing that anybody does will deter you from the mission that you have to do. Nothing will turn you back. So I implore you today, dear friends in Christ, as strong as you are, we all need help. So let us not only depend on, on YouTube videos, we encourage you, share the videos so that others will be able to understand and share in the gospel of Christ so that we may minister to them as well. But we also ask you to, non, to do not fail to gather and to share in the fellowship of, with your brethren so that you may grow from each other and support each other in what you have to do as fellow Christians. All we are doing is teaching about love, the love of God, the discipline that we must have, and the focus we must have so that we can accomplish what it is that God wants us to accomplish in our lives. Let us not take it for granted. Let us not take this life that God has set before us for granted, but let us continue to be like all the apostles and saints that we would hear in the scripture and follow God and model our lives accordingly. Let us do what we have to do. Rather, let us not sit down and take things for granted. Let us not sit back idly and expect that things will go on automatically. No, live our lives as Christian. Live our lives as those that the early Christians did in the books of Acts. Study the books of Acts. Study Acts, study every chapter. It is the ideal book for, all, for early Christians and see how it is that God wants us to live. And let us transform our lives and give to God fully what he deserves. Let us not give him what is left over, but truly 
the first fruits of our worship and love. All these things I pray in the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. us now to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our intercessions. We pray at this time for the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Most Reverend Justin Welby. We also pray for the Archbishop of the Church in the Province of the West Indies, the Most Reverend Howard Gregory. In our own Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago, we pray for the Right Reverend Claude Berkeley, Diocese and Bishop. We pray for Calvin, Clive and Rawl, retired bishops. We also at this time remember the passing of our dear brother, the Reverend Father Anthony Maula Bash, as we remember all the contributions he would have made throughout the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago and also the Diocese of Guyana and all the other places where the Spirit of God would have led him. We pray that God will continue to comfort his family at this time and we pray for all those that he would be leaving to mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the inner parish of St. Mary, for the Reverend Dr. Anderson Maxwell, parish priest, and all supporting clergy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. We pray to God that you clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. Give, O Lord, peace to all in the world, for only in you truly can we live in peace. Dear God, we pray for this nation of Trinidad and Tobago and all other nations that you will guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, Heavenly Father, and let your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. We pray here as well, we pray the intercession for the dearly departed as we remember our dear, bro our dear brother, Father Anthony Maulabash. Almighty God, we remember before you today your faithful servant, Anthony. And we pray that having opened to him the gates of larger life, you will receive him more and more into your joyful service. And with all who have faithfully served you in the past, he may share in eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will touch briefly as we share birthday greetings to all who are celebrating birthdays at this point in time. On the 14th, we had Jilda Stafford. Happy belated birthday to you. We also had Kanisha Nimblet Isaac celebrating her birthday. Happy belated birthday. Yesterday we had Karen Philip, we had Chin Wendy, okay, and we also had Joshua Edwards celebrating birthdays. Today we have Eleanor McDonald Katoy celebrating her birthday. Happy birthday to you. And as we go forward, on Thursday, we have Joyce Lynn Gray celebrating her birthday. And on Saturday, we have Esla George and Anthony Michael Perry. Happy birthday to you all as we continue to celebrate your lives. For those, we also are like to take a moment to make a special mention for those who can physically attend. Our social outreach committee is hosting a health fair this Saturday. That is Saturday the 20th, so we are inviting you to come and attend. We will have members, we will have doctors and all kind of medical personnel present 
so that we can have uh, you can come free of charge at the St. Mary's Parish Hall that is located right off the Parity Bus Route um, in the vicinity of the Eddie Hart Savannah. Feel free to come. It will be from a, a, the event takes place on this Saturday, as I said, and you will, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. You will have free screening, uh, free health screening, and all these other things you can get the blood work, dental, education, vision, screening, dietitian, cholesterol checking, counseling, and lifestyle diseases, and the list goes on and on. So we invite you to come and attend and be a part of this celebration. As we give back to the community, please come out. We want you to be a part of it. The prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a shrine to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day and a holy week in Jesus' name.